If you are thinking about buying a new graphics card, you might want to just hold off on that decision. Or if you really wanted a current generation RTX 40 series GPU, then you might want to buy it now. New leaks surrounding Nvidia's RTX 50 series and their current production operations suggest that they're gearing up for a launch very soon, and these cards are just right around the corner. Regardless of whether you're interested in the new series or not, I think a good rule of thumb is to wait and see how the market is impacted by this new release. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to preface this video's topic that right now, you the consumer who may be in a position to buy a new GPU, whether that's for an upgrade or for a new build, are currently in a very good position. I know how I just said that if you were planning on buying a new GPU, you should hold off on that just to see what the new series brings, what pricing is like, and how the rest of this current generation will be impacted. However, the reason why this timeline works out in your benefit is that if you really must buy a new GPU right now, then I say go for it, even if you are indecisive about waiting for next generation. This advice will not be applicable to all regions, but here in Canada, and I'm sure in the US, most retailers have enacted their extended holiday return policies. Canada Computers, who are our largest parts retailer, will have their extended holiday policy running from November 15th, 2024 to January 12th, 2025. So any products purchased within this window can be returned for a refund, but they do have some terms and conditions you'd need to follow, like it must be unopened or, you know, must be sellable condition or resellable condition. Now alternatively, Amazon who operate here and in the US also have their extended return policy for products purchased from November 1st, 2024 to December 31st, 2024 and are returnable until January 15th, 2025. And dealing with Amazon returns is typically a breeze. They don't care if you opened or used it or not. Newegg who also operate in both regions have a similar policy in place for the holidays. That's good because you're not constrained by a 14 day return window. The reason why I bring this up and we'll talk more about about this in a moment is because there has been a lot of information coming out lately which points towards Nvidia releasing or at least announcing their RTX 50 series lineup during CES 2025. CES will be held from January 7th 2025 until January 10th which falls during the extended holiday return periods for most of these retailers. So if you really are on the fence of buying a new GPU then get it and then when the 50 series is announced and you like something better with that new generation then return it and get that instead. And I also know that many places offer price protection, so if there is a massive price drop after CES, then you should be covered. When we often discuss whether you should wait or not, I often see two camps here. One that says, hey, you told me to wait, and now the new stuff is too expensive, and I can't even buy the last generation good deals I saw because everything is sold out or discontinued. On the other hand, there's a crowd that says, you told me not to wait and just buy now, and now Nvidia has launched a faster graphics card for a cheaper price. I've seen it go both ways, with the transition we had from the 20 series to the 30 series we saw people raving about how they were able to get 2080 Ti performance for like less than half the price with the RTX 3070. And then there were also people who were like pissed off because with the RTX 30 series to the 40 series, you could have bought a 3090 or a 3090 Ti for like $800 at one point on the clearance deals instead of buying like a 4080 for 1200 bucks at that time. Well, now, whichever camp you're in, it doesn't even matter because even if you bought a GPU, you're in such a large return window that you can just return it. That would be my advice if your scared stock might run out and the next gen stuff is super expensive. Anyways, this article was posted on Video Cards' website where they're sourcing a post from the Board Channel's website and there's some interesting information in there pertaining to the release schedule of the RTX 50 series. The post states that Nvidia's latest RTX 50 series GPUs will be launched on time in January and will not be delayed any further, which means that the RTX 40 series has entered the final stage of inventory clearance, with only about two months left. Nvidia's real RTX 40 GPU production line capacity has long been gradually transferred to the RTX 50 GPU production, and the main production line has been fully transferred, so the RTX 40 GPU is now in the final stage of inventory clearance. According to the latest news from upstream internal sources, Nvidia has completely withdrawn the 8106 production line, and the production capacity has been fully transferred to the RTX 50 series production line, with only the 8107 production line temporarily retained. Therefore, the RTX 40 series GPU has entered the final quarter of inventory clearance. The RTX 40 mid to high end series GPU has gradually stopped production and supply, and product switching has been accelerated. The supply of AIC brand manufacturers in the future market will become less and less. So the wording was definitely off there. This is all through a translator, so that's why. But this aligns with what a lot of people have been saying about their release date, that the RTX 50 series
series will be announced at CES makes sense as it's basically one of the biggest tech conferences which is held in the year. So what I find interesting about this post is that it coincides with one of my most recent videos where I talk about Nvidia's RTX 3060 and 4060 selling really well in this current market. And I think that's attributing to Nvidia's decision to continue that production line for the 8107 GPUs, which is what the 4060 uses and the entry level laptop GPUs use. If those cards are still selling well, then there's really no reason to replace them so quickly. And this also coincides with another post that we saw from the board channel forums where a user claimed that they had info suggesting that Nvidia was going to release the 50 series GPUs from the top of the stack to the entry level all within the first quarter of 2025. Personally, I can see them making a pretty big announcement unlike past staggered releases. Think about it, they'll be holding the spotlight at CES where they aren't just focusing on the 5090, but they also introduced the rest of the stack including the 5080, 5070 Ti, 5070, and 5060 Ti. Like if they plan to release the enthusiast and high end in January, then a month later with the mid range such as the 70 class, and then a 60 class in March, I doubt they'll hold separate launch events for each SKU within a month of each other. Though they can always just put up some launch trailers on their channel and call it a day. But I think what would be better is that if they had announced them all at CES and gave the dates even if it is staggered within the first quarter, that'll be fine. Because for the people who want a 70 class, they'll wait for it. And the same goes for the people who are after 60 class cards. And speaking of the 60 class, by the time it'll launch in March, they can then discontinue the production line of 8107 GPUs to allocate those resources towards the entry level 50 series GPUs. Now with Nvidia taking such a bold stance here, I think this alludes to some potential price jumps across the entire lineup. Historically, we've seen Nvidia take advantage of their dominant position, especially when they don't face strong competition. And right now with AMD not having a direct competitor for the 4090 and even Intel still establishing itself in the discrete GPU market, it seems likely that Nvidia could push prices up, especially for the high end and enthusiast grade cards like the 5090 and 5080. This reminds me of the transition from the 10 series to the RTX 20 series where there was no competition at all and Nvidia created new pricing tiers. We've already seen prices creep up with each generation and considering the rumored performance improvements for the 50 series, it wouldn't be surprising to me if Nvidia felt justified in charging a premium. If they launch at CES with the 5090 positioned as the pinnacle of GPU performance, they'll have the spotlight to frame these new prices as a necessary reflection of advanced technology and R&D costs. But let's be honest, if they do increase prices significantly, it's more about capitalizing on their market position rather than covering costs. For the enthusiast and high-end market, there's a strong chance we'll see the 5090 start at a higher price point than the 4090 did. And since Nvidia has seemingly focused on production shifts and prioritizing 8106 and 8107 chips for their lower tier cards, they might price the 5080 and 5070 a bit more aggressively than most think to create a clear hierarchy that nudges buyers towards the 5090 if they are chasing the ultimate performance. Just go ahead and take a look at the leaked specs and you'll see what I mean. The performance advancements or the specification upgrades are very lackluster in those segments as opposed to the RTX 5090. For consumers who are looking at the mid-range and budget options like the 5060 and 5070, the situation could be a bit more complex. While Nvidia might introduce these GPUs in the first quarter, the question is whether they'll actually bring any new value to the price to performance ratio argument, or if they'll come in at a slightly inflated price as well. If they stagger the release dates, they could initially roll out a few high-end models with a premium price tag, and then slightly reduce prices on the mid-range cards, giving them a more affordable but so still somewhat of an inflated base line. It's going to be very dependent on what the performance jump will be though. I mean, if the RTX 5060 Ti is 20% faster on average compared to a 4060 Ti, great, but if it's priced 20-30% to 30 more, then that's really going to undermine that advancement. The other key factor here is Nvidia's decision to retain production of 8107 chips for the RTX 4060 and the laptop 4050 chips. This move suggests that Nvidia is expecting these cards to continue performing well, which would indicate that they don't feel any pressure to lower the price on these new 50 60 cards at launch. Instead, they might position the 5060 at a higher price tier, keeping it as a quote unquote entry level option, but closer in price to what we expect for a mid range card. If you were hoping for a budget friendly 50 series card, the initial launches might not beat that expectation for you. I don't know if you remember, but there was a slide that Nvidia showed during the initial launch of the 40 series where they had them listed with the lower end 30 series GPUs, implying that. 
If you cannot afford these new cards at a higher price, then we still have a product for you, and that's called the RTX 3060, 3070. So with this likely pricing structure, it feels like Nvidia is relying heavily on the allure of a next-gen series to drive up hype and consequently the willingness of consumers to spend more. But it's important to question, are these GPUs really offering a significant leap in performance and features, or is Nvidia simply banking on the appeal of a new number? If we look back, the 4000 series brought some impressive advancements, but it also pushed the envelope on power consumption, size, and cooling requirements. Nvidia justified the higher prices with these features, but it left many people wondering if we were really seeing meaningful progress in value or just an escalating game of specification inflation. It remains to be seen if the 50 series will genuinely move the needle in a way that justifies any price hike, or if it'll be more of the same with slightly higher benchmarks, but at a significant higher cost, but they're overselling it with some new AI feature or some new gimmick. Perhaps the cards will excel at AI workloads, and that will be Nvidia's true target audience. One thing is for sure, this release will likely set the tone for 2025's GPU market. With Nvidia pushing out its 50 series and likely adjusting prices across the board, AMD and Intel will have to make marketing decisions to stay competitive. AMD straight up said they're not going to be competing in the high end, so they're going to have to really come out swinging for the mid-range and entry-level market. And for Intel, if it means they have a window to potentially capture some of the budget-conscious segment, if Nvidia prices itself out out of reach for mainstream consumers, then I think they should definitely go for it, especially if their main goal here is to get market share. This also raises the question of what kind of performance boost the 50 series will actually deliver, especially with rumors about improved efficiency and a focus on AI-driven features. If these cards manage to pull off substantial gains in performance and efficiency, that could set a new baseline that other brands will struggle to match. But again, if these gains come at a much higher price point, it might just push the budget and mainstream gamers to stick with older models or explore alternatives like RDNA 4 or Intel's Battlemage lineup. The bottom line is this, if you're considering a GPU upgrade, you have options, Use this extended holiday return policy to your advantage. Monitor how the market reacts to the 50 series launch and, you know, stay informed about any pricing adjustments, keep an eye on price clearance deals, and etc. This could be one of the best times in recent years to actually make a well-informed GPU purchase, whether it's jumping on a new RTX 50 card, snagging a discounted 40 series model, or even exploring what Intel and AMD have to offer to find the best balance for price to performance. As for now, that's going to be doing it for this one, and we'll be touching base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.